We continue to grow and evolve um, both as a community um, and as spokespeople for the community and that uh, in recent years has come to taking in um, gender non-conforming uh, pronouns and there's a lot of stuff that even as members of the LGBTQ community we have to learn and grow. How do you guys approach all that being such active and vocal people um, about LGBTQ rights to make sure that you're kind of up on what the proper terminologies are and, and all of that? Well, young people have always been at the start, um, at the beginning of every major movement. We have to forget, you know, cannot forget that, you know, it was a bunch of homeless, trans and queer people on the streets, you know, who rioted at Stonewall, who were at, you know, the Compton Cafeteria riots, who were also part of ACT UP. Um, they're always going to push you, right? If you think about, you know, Vietnam War protests, it was college campuses across the country that pushed people. And so when I think about the way in which language and identities and expressions have evolved, I look to young people to help guide me, right? Um, and so if there are new gender markers and there are new genders and expressions and new definitions for sexualities, my job as a person within this community is, is to be as inclusive and tolerant and welcoming and as anyone else. And so my job is to educate myself and to, to mm. you know, you know, they call me auntie and mom and stuff, you know. <laughs> I'm like, bitch, I'm so young. But, <laughs> but you know, it's... it's <laughs> who are we, right? I mean, yeah. we, we, you have two choices in that. You can hear that there's a, a new pronoun or that so-and-so has decided that they're now more comfortable being known as so-and-so. And you have two choices. You can be tolerant and go, okay. Yeah that's what it is, or you can, ah, what, this is, I will never. This is going too far. This is too harumph, <laughs> not on my time. But even thinking like, about that doesn't Ruby, make sense. Like, you know, yeah. Ruby's own career, you know, and your own way in which you've talked about being gender fluid, and, mm. you know, that messes up the way that people think about queer people. And you know what I mean? Yeah, and, and the way thing, yeah. that that happened was, I came to the States to get into acting, couldn't even get a manager or an agent, made a short film based on my life because I had the time to do it, <laughs> and put it online just to say this is something I wanted to do, and that it went viral, which I didn't ever expect. I didn't know what that was or if it was a good thing at the time. And, uh, and then got, uh, you know, got an uh, opportunity to audition for Orange is the New Black because they wanted to have a gender neutral, neutral character. So it is interesting how, you know, you've all sort of mentioned, it's pivoted us in a completely different direction we couldn't have expected, but just the most blessed direction. And you just then follow the universe's guide there. But yeah, it was that video that helped me get Orange, which then opened the doors to actually being able to have a career in the States at all. In terms of having terminology, uh, because obviously you felt the way you feel, you know, since childhood, mm -hmm. but to have now words that you're able to express that in a way that other people understand it in a in a in a word, does that change well, sometimes things? Sometimes a word becomes bigger than you, or mm -hmm. bigger than you think. And I, when it comes to gender fluidity, gender neutrality, gender, I mean, it, it's become, and, and I do like what we're talking about, talking to younger people, talking about what this means to them and, and hearing them out at a different, you know, you go to rallies or you go to GLAAD events and you watch these documentaries and these videos and they teach you so much. But I think that when I, I remember that there was a, a singer in Australia called Missy Higgins who came out eventually as um, sort of sexuality uh, fluid. And when I said that, that I was sort of gender fluid in the video, it was kind of because, oh, that's what that video was about. It was because like, I kind of remember what she said and thought, well, that's me. Like, I'm fluid in my gender. But then it became a much more coined term that became a lot more, I, I got backlash, and that's when you realize you have to keep up on the terminology, <laughs> that when I got cast as a lesbian in Batwoman, that I didn't know that being a gender fluid woman meant that I couldn't be a lesbian because I'm not a woman, a woman enough <clears throat> and not lesbian enough. And so I was, that was my initial response was <laughs> And then I was like, wait, let me just figure this one out because it matters to someone that understands this differently to my understanding, how do I write this wrong? Because if someone out there is upset by this, I need to know why and how to fix it. And so that's when I sort of said, well, I'm a woman that identifies as a woman. I, you know, I'm not trans, I haven't had any changes on that since the video, but if gender fluidity means that I can't identify as a woman at any, at any point, then I guess I can't be that. It's just that maybe it's, maybe I'm on a different scale of a gender, maybe I need to make up another term. But it's one that doesn't 
step on any toes. One where I can be fluid in my gender, but also know that I'm a lesbian, because otherwise I'm not sure what I am. It gets a little complicated. Mm -hmm. I think the English language fails us. I yeah. think we have a miserable language that was born of duality. You were either man or a woman, mm -hmm. and then, then the, the, the. We have the, the, the word, gaze. though. It's human. Yes, it's human. And, we and have it. We, we always want to just, you know, put us into. And once we were like, okay, then you're man or woman. Oh, okay, then you're either gay or lesbian. You know, okay, that's okay. Gay, lesbian, then, bi. You, right. you know, and then it starts. Lesbian, and it, yeah. it, the thing is, you could line up everyone in the whole wide world, from masculine to feminine, and it would go boy, girl, boy, girl. You know, there's, there's not. We can't put us all in a box anymore and it makes some people nervous people like their duality they like you know good and bad and light and dark and and that's not the way it is that's not where we're moving to as humanity you know we are we the, we need we need more words we need more uh, understanding that it's all this fluidity it's all this beautiful I'm hoping that we get to so many words that we need no words. Yes, yes. That we just go, we have made up yeah, words, human, we have, yes. you know, created a way that, because we all needed a word to identify with, mm -hmm. you know, and I have to think about that when I'm thinking of all the, the new terminologies coming out or when I feel like maybe I've used the wrong terminology because I know that someone has gone, oh, thank goodness for this word. Yeah. This word finally encapsulates it so I can then say to my parents something that they will understand. Here, it's this, this thing. Now go read about it, mum and dad, you mm -hmm. know. But I do hope that one day we get to a point where there are just so many words that everyone just goes, you know what, I'm done with this word learning. <laughs> All of you guys just go be yourselves there and you we're go. just going to sit back and not care anymore.